What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I am Pitchy Ninja, and I'm here with Will Leahy. What's happening, Will? Ninja, how about this start yesterday from Wake Forest ace Chase Burns, formerly known as Tennessee ace. But uh, yeah, what'd you see from, from Burns here? This guy's an absolute electric factory. He's been on your radar for a while. Anything different yesterday where he had 15 Ks in six innings? Not really anything different. He's been doing this all year. But uh, I think everybody needs to start paying attention to him because he may be the best college pitching prospect since Paul Skeens. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> really going out on a limb here. This year, I would say there are two pitchers that are above everybody else. One of them's Chase Burns. The other's Hagen Smith. And honestly, you can make an argument for either being the best prospect this year. Hagen throws Hagen's a lefty, Chase Burns a righty, but what Chase Burns did yesterday is absolutely ridiculous. He averaged 2,716 RPMs on his fastball. You know how many MLB pitchers average that high on their fastball? There would be none. So not only does he throw freaking gas, he averaged 98 miles an hour with his fastball yesterday, topping out at about 100 miles an hour, just a little over 100. But he also has a higher spin rate than any MLB pitcher, which means that his fastball has a lot of induced vertical break and he can live at the top of the zone. So not only is his fastball fast, but it's also really hard to hit. And that's not his best pitch. His best pitch is his slider. His slider is about 3000 RPMs and is just absolutely wicked. I did some comps and he comes out sort of close to another Burns, Corbin Burns. His slider projects a little like Corbin Burns slider, which has a 47.8% whiff rate in MLB. Pretty much same velo. Chase Burns may have a little bit higher velo than Corbin Burns, and their spin rates are about the same. Movement profiles are similar. So you're talking about a guy that can jump into MLB with a slider that profiles a lot like Corbin Burns' slider and a fastball that profiles like nobody's. That's going to be trouble, and he can get to the show really quickly. He had an 81% whiff rate on his slider yesterday for the game. I think it was 17 whiffs out of 21 swings. He leads college in strikeouts this year with 184 Ks in 95 innings. That's 17.4 K per nine. Hagen Smith is no slouch. He's about at that level, too, with 154 and 79. But to put that in perspective, Paul Skeens last year, 209 Ks in 122 and a two-thirds innings. That's 15.3 Ks per nine. So Chase Burns and Hagen Smith both average more Ks per nine than Paul Skeens, who's an absolute stud. The thing I like about Skeens is body type, big dude, strong dude, but they're very different. Um, to me, Chase Burns is very electric. Uh, Paul Skeens is just a overpowering bully. But uh, he's going to be trouble, and I would not hesitate to pick him as the first pitcher in the draft. I will be at the Combine this year, so I'll be seeing these guys firsthand. Um, MLB wanted me to go to cover it, and I'm definitely going to do it. So should be fun, but really start hoping your team takes a strong look at Chase Burns. Now for the whip around the league. I'm going to start with Kent Maeda who led the Tigers to victory. Tigers won 6-2. Maeda had 1K in five scoreless innings, giving up four hits. He got his K on the splitter, and he didn't have a lot of Ks this game, but had a lot of success. He really mixed his pitches up well and kept hitters guessing all day. He faced Alec Manoa, who had 4Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up four earned runs. Manoa had this elevated fastball, his usual mix of sliders, threw in a changeup, but also had this horrible changeup. He caught way too much of the plate, and left the yard. Mackenzie Gore led the Nats to a 6-1 to victory. He had 8 Ks in 7 innings, giving up one run. He had this 97-mile-an-hour heater, this wicked slider, nasty curveballs. He also had these curveballs at the top of the zone, which it may look like mistakes, but when we get robo-umps, this is going to be a legit, filthy pitch and an impossible pitch for hitters to hit because you tend to give up on these curveballs and they catch the top of the zone. Gore outdueled George Kirby, who had three Ks in six innings, giving up five runs. Kirby's fastballs were up to 98 miles an hour. His stuff looked pretty good. He did walk a hitter, and this is about as big a miss as you'll ever see Kirby have on ball four. He looks pissed off. Ninja, Kirby's got like two walks in his last three games. What's up with his command? Yeah, he's slumping. I mean, 
kind of sucks now. But seriously, his command did leave him a little bit here as he missed over the plate. This pitch leaks over the plate and gets punished. Bailey Falter led the Pirates to an 11 to 5 win over the Braves. He had four Ks and seven and a third innings, giving up three runs. He had these fastballs, including this one that Arcia almost fell down on his slider and these curveballs. Speaking of curveballs, Seth Lugo had his curveball working leading the Royals to an 8-1 to victory. He had three Ks and in seven innings, giving up one run. He had this painted sinker and this turbo curveball with 3,446 RPMs. James Paxson had four Ks and four and two-thirds innings, giving up five runs. And honestly, he's been just plain old vanilla. Like, I thought last year he was dominant at times. Yesterday I had this fastball, but really nothing to excite me out of James Paxton. He faced Graham Ashcraft, who led the Reds to victory, 9-6 to six over the Dodgers. He had three Ks in five and a third innings, giving up five runs. He had these sliders and picked up a sword, and this filthy changeup that ends up behind the hitter. Cutter Crawford had four Ks in four and a third innings, giving up six runs, and his ERA is fading up to 2.89. He had this cutter and splitter. He faced Bryce Wilson, who didn't start this game. What was the bulk guy? It led the Brewers to victory over the Sox, 7-2. to two. He had 7 Ks and 5 and a third innings, giving up two runs, and had these backdoor cutters. Christian Scott did not cause the Mets to lose yesterday, but they did. They lost to the Giants 8-7, to seven, but he had 4 Ks and 6 innings, giving up two runs. I didn't think he had his best stuff, to be honest. He K'd the side with these fastballs, but again, a mark of a good pitcher, especially a good young pitcher, is getting by when you don't have your best stuff. Didn't lead the team to victory, but I see a lot of victories in his future. I mean, just an absolute heart rip for the Mets again, being being up 6-3 in the eighth and just giving up a game-losing grand slam. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's not good, Ninja. Christian Scott faced Kyle Harrison, who had six Ks in five innings, giving up four runs when it's kind of average. Had these fastballs and sliders. Bailey Ober led the Twins to a 3-2 to two victory over the Rangers, had 5 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 2 runs. He had these painted and paintish fastballs. He faced Jose Urania, who had 6 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs, and had these nasty sliders. Corbin Burns, no relation to Chase, helped the Orioles win 7-2 to two over the White Sox. I don't think Burns had his A game, he had his B game, but still had 6 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 3 runs. Had this absolutely wicked sinker. I mean, look at this thing drop. As well as his usual cutter, nasty sliders and curveball. He faced Chris the Snake Flexen, who had two Ks in four and two thirds innings, giving up four runs, and had these change ups. And I love Chris Flexen getting his signs here because it's less like getting your signs and more like a conversation about what he wants to throw. Christopher Sanchez had two Ks in five and a third innings, giving up one run. His ERA right now is 3.15. He had these change-ups, and he has a 44% whiff rate on his change-up this year. One of the better pitchers in MLB. But the Rockies won this game 3-2. to two. Ty Block had two Ks in six and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs, and had this curveball. This game also featured Bryce Harper getting tossed really early in this contest. I mean, it wasn't the worst call I've seen, but... I mean, this call on Chase Burns' strike yesterday was absolutely one of the worst calls I've ever seen. Even Chase Burns was like, holy sh**. I didn't want to bust up my glowing review of Chase Burns with this called strike, but Lord. Carlos Rodon led the Yankees to an 8 to nothing victory over the Padres. He only had two Ks, but threw six scoreless innings. He had this painted slider, and I love this point to the umpire. Like, you call this right now, and he does. And then had this slider at the knees. Faced you, Darvish, who had this nasty front door two-seamer and slider, but gave up a ton of home runs. As you see here, it just got to the point where you was just like, all right, there goes another one. I mean, his ball, he didn't miss his spot a ton, but his pitches missed just enough to get hammered. It was an absolute dong fest. Logan Allen helped the Guardians win 10 to 4 over the Angels. He had seven Ks and five and two thirds innings, giving up three runs. He had these change ups and sweepers and picked up a sword. Faced Patrick Sandoval, who I thought was making a comeback this year, but that comeback was cut a little short. He had four Ks and three and two thirds innings, giving up eight runs. 
His ERA is back up to 5.6 after making a little rally over a couple games. Had these sweepers and slider. Braxton Garrett was freaking outstanding yesterday, leading the Marlins to a 3 to nothing victory over the D-backs. And all that nothing was due to Braxton Garrett. He had a shutout, six strikeouts, four hits, no walks. He had this painted fastball, the sinker, and a couple of absolutely disgusting back foot sliders for swords. My man Braxton Garrett always comes through for my K-props. 95 pitches, Ninja. You threw a Maddox. Really good outing, man. I told you he's a good pitcher. Just hadn't been showing in his other two outings. He outdueled Zach Gallon, who cost me my K-prop parlay by one. Gallon had this changeup, this knuckle curve, and painted fastball, but it's kind of meh. Kind of an average outing for Gallon. Justin Verlander led the Astros to a 6-3 victory over the A's. Verlander went six innings with nine Ks. Nice. Gave up only one earned run, eight hits, and no walks. He passed Greg Maddox for 10th on the all-time strikeout list. He now has 3,377 strikeouts. He had these fastballs, including these elevated fastballs, and this one that was painted in the upper corner, like a postage stamp. And this slider and this absolute bowel locking curveball. Look at this. This is prime Verlander. And here's an overlay with his elevated fastball and that curveball. And you can see why, as a hitter, you swung at a fastball that was up out of the zone. And you're like, I am not going to do that again. That curveball is well above that fastball that you swung at mistakenly. So you take it, and what happens? It's a freaking hammer and ends up in the zone. Filthy stuff by Justin Verlander. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Matt Carasetti had this fork ball. He pitched in Japan. I assume he picked it up in Japan. This thing only has around 600 RPMs. And no, he's no relation to Tommy Carcetti from The Wire. Edwin Diaz actually had some nasty stuff yesterday. This 91 mile an hour slider and 99 mile an hour heater. Is he making his way back to dominant Edwin Diaz? Maybe. Let's keep a look on this. Camilo Duvall had this 102 mile an hour cutting fastball. Josh Hader had this fastball and wicked slider. Brian Hudson had this sweeper. Don't look now, but Brian Hudson's ERA is 0.64. He's one of the more effective relievers in baseball. Jordan Leisure had this slider. His ERA now is 2.18. I know he gets overlooked on the White Sox, but could be trade bait at some point this season. And Ryan Walker had this Frisbee slider. My top five filthiest pitches of the day yesterday. At number five, Corbin Burns in that disgusting sinker. At number four, Yuan Duran with this 99 mile an hour painted splinker. Yep, I don't make the rules, but if I did, I wouldn't allow 99-mile-an-hour splitters. At number three, we have Braxton Garrett and those wicked backfoot sliders for swords. At number two, we have Justin Verlander and that bowel-locking curveball. And at number one, we have Chase Burns and his ridiculous sliders, picking up sword after sword after sword. Dude had 30 swings and misses yesterday in only six innings. Do the math, Will. How many is that per inning? Did you say 30 and six innings? Five? I did. You, my friend, are a master at the five times table. That was one of my favorites growing up. My pitching engine moment of Zen. Up in the air. Oh. And it does. Look at this. We got nobody covering second, second base. base. And he hustles and nobody's covering. Gets all the way in third. There's now nobody at the plate. Home. And he will. They get him. Got him. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start with Reynaldo Lopez for 6Ks or more, then take Aaron Nola for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Tanner Bybee for 6Ks or more. Yep, the son of the beast K-prop parlay. What would your picks of the day be? 